In this video, we're going to do something just a little bit different. Uh, I got on a YouTube hangout with John Abbott from Hog Holsters to talk about um, the details of flying with a firearm. John's got a lot of experience doing that, so he's got some, uh, some real-world information that'll, that I think will, will maybe help you out if you're, if you're interested in that. And it ran just a little bit long, but um, if you stick around to the end, I think it'll be worth it. There's, there's, there's a little, little surprise for you there. And we're going to talk about maybe real quickly why John doesn't make Beretta holsters. Um, we'll talk about all that's going to be coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, so in just a minute, um, we're gonna ch we're gonna swap this over to the uh, recording of the YouTube hangout. Um, honestly, the the you might see a little bit of that old J Chinese movie deal with the mouth not hooking up with the audio because you know we're, he's in Arizona, I'm in Georgia, and I guess there's you know anytime you do that streaming kind of thing, there's a little bit of a little bit issues there. So the video quality is not as great as I would hope it would be, but it's it's not bad. Um, and the information is excellent, so it ran just a little bit long, but just stick around, like I said, to the end. Uh, maybe we'll try to make it worth your while. John's got a special, special, kind of a special surprise for, for those of you who stick around to the end. And um, without further ado, let's just switch to that footage and we'll talk about how you can legally and correctly fly with a firearm. John, um, first of all, thanks so much for taking time to um, talk to us. I know you're busy, busy, busy making holsters and having all kinds of fun out there in Arizona, right? Scottsdale somewhere? Absolutely. Arizona. Arizona. God's country. Yes. Yeah, so I, um, I went through there. I don't, my son's actually just took a road trip here from Atlanta to LA in a U-Haul delivering some stuff for a friend of our friend of ours. And so they went through Northern Arizona. Scottsdale's in kind of Southern Arizona, right? Yeah. Right, right, right by Phoenix. So anyway, they did get to go see the Grand Canyon, so that was cool. They took a detour there, saw the Grand Canyon. But um, so anyway, um, we were talking about something we could maybe share some information with folks. And you know, um, I took a trip a couple of years ago to the a, a road trip from Atlanta to um, L.A. and back in San Diego, and I, I went to the trouble of, of contacting every single um, every single municipality between here and there to try to figure out what the what the carry laws were and what I could could and couldn't do legally. Cause you know, I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time in the Mississippi jail or whatever other jail may be. And it was kind of interesting. I got everything from, you know, I think Kansas said, please feel free to carry period. That was all they said. And, and California, well, you know, California. So we won't got, I wound up uh, mailing my 15 round mags home from the border in California and having to find a Glock store to sell me 10 round mags so I could be legal, even though I couldn't carry it. If they told me if it was in the vehicle, it would be a felony, which is completely asinine stupidity, but that's California, right? So, um, I, know lot, I don't go there. I know there's a lot of good folks in California. that are really just, they're having, having a rough time of it, you know, with, with firearm stuff right now. So but anyway, so, um, we were talking about a way to, um, Maybe get some information out, and one of the things we just we thought would be a good a good first kind of first take at this hangout thing is um what somebody needs to do to be in compliance if they're flying on an airplane with a handgun. A lot of people think you just cannot fly with a, with a firearm, and that's not necessarily true, right? Well, it, it's not. You cannot take an a air a firearm on an airplane, uh, carrying on uh, unless you're a federal agent. Um, first off, I want to say that what you're getting ready to learn is, or what I'm getting ready to tell you is not legal advice. If you want legal advice, grab a checkbook and go find a lawyer. But this is advice from experience of traveling with a firearm. And, and I, I have flown with a firearm quite a bit in my lifetime. Uh, I have, I have found that I am actually have been treated better when I fly with a firearm than sometimes when I've flown without one. And, uh, that, that's a little story that I'll tell you at the end, uh, but uh, what I want to tell you is there's certain things you have to know and you have to have. For instance, if I have to fly to New York, um, I'm not going to take my firearm with me. Um, doesn't matter what TSA says. I'm not going to take a gun to, to New York because I don't want to lose the gun. And uh, I don't want to go to prison because everything I've heard about jail is uh, they're not co-ed. So I really don't want to go there. Um, the next thing is, is if you are going to play, go with a gun, what you need to do is make sure that where you're going, the firearm you want to take there is legal. That's step number one. Find out if it's legal, like you did with California. Okay. So let's say that I'm going to fly to Florida. 
Okay. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, number one, I'm going to find out if my permit is my concealed carry permit is honored in Florida. It is. So I'm going to use Florida as an example because I've done the back work and I may background check and I may have to uh, or the, uh, find out what Florida requires. So I'm going to go ahead and get all my gear together of what I need to fly with a firearm. Okay. First thing I'm going to need is a hard sided pistol case. Okay. So not like and, a little zipper bag. It's got to be a hard case. No, it's it's got to be a hard case. And when you buy one, I've got one here that I, that I bought for traveling because sometimes, you know, I may be just taking my concealed carry firearm. But um, what if I want to go shoot a pistol match somewhere? You know, it's got more room for my stuff, you know. That's a Pelican case, right? Or like a Pelican case? It, yeah, I think it's a flambeau. It's something I grabbed when I, when I needed it real quick. Um, the thing of it is it needs to have locks on it uh, where you can lock it. And I'll tell you a little secret. Sometimes when you buy a gun case, you find out that a padlock you got around home isn't small enough to go through there. Okay, so you want a padlock that definitely fits. Okay, now, um, TSA locks, the ones that TSA has magic keys that open all of them, those are not what they want you to fly with a firearm with. They want you with a lock that only you have a key that will open. See, I didn't know that. I thought that they would have to, you'd have to have a key where they could open it. On the outside of your luggage, yes. I guess. On this piece that goes inside of your luggage, but they do not want this lock to be a TSA lock that they can open. Inside of your luggage is the best place to put this, right. not by itself. Right. Um, okay. Now, so you want the case. Now, the next thing, if you're going to fly with a gun, well, guess what? It's a good idea to have a pistol. And here's my wife's lock 43. And I'm going to show that it's empty. Okay. In her nice hog holster. Okay. Plug one. It's a nice holster. <laughs> it and it's got a laser on it that's magnet activated because she likes that. All right. Uh, so the next thing is, is you're going to want to make sure that it's empty and the magazines are empty. Now, I know you're going to hear from people who said, well, the TSA said I could fly with a magazine in there. You know what? I've been told nine times out of 10, they don't want rounds in the magazine. Are there exceptions? Yes. Take the rounds out of the magazine. Okay. The next thing you're going to want is all your ammunition that you're flying with, because you don't want to fly without a gun without ammo, is you're going to want it in a box. Now, it does not have to be in a box like this, but it, either in a factory box or in a plastic reloading box is what they've always required. Now, this is the box I had. It's for my 44 Magnum, but but this is this is the kind of box they want it in or the factory box that it came in. So you loot. Cardboard factory box is fine as long as it's cardboard factory. factory box is fine. What they don't want is like your ammo to be in a Ziploc bag where it could hit real hard and maybe set off a primer. Right. You know, they, they don't want that. Okay. Now, what I do is I get a suitcase that's large enough to hold that case because I want this to be in the suitcase. Now, when you fly, the first thing you're going to go do is you're going to go to the TSA. You're going to go check in. You cannot curbside check in. So we're gonna we've, you've got your gun in the case. Okay, you got your gun in the case. It's locked up. You verified that it's empty. So the mag can be in the gun. You just don't have to, can't have any ammo in the mag. The mag can be in the gun. I just leave it out. And okay. the reason I leave it out is, is because you're going to be dealing with some people behind the counter that aren't really, for the most part, gun educated. Right. And so what you want to do is you want to make it as smooth and as quick as, as possible. So what you do is make sure the gun's empty, lock it, double, triple, check it a thousand times, okay? And so what you do is you make sure the gun's empty, stick it in the case, and then put your magazines in there, put your ammo in the case, is what I do. And if you look, this box has a place for the ammo to sit in there. Okay, so your ammo doesn't have to be in a separate box. It's just got to be... It does not have to be in a separate box, and I put it in the same box just because it's all locked up. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, so I put it in there and then I lock it up before I go into the airport. Now, when I say before I go into the airport, I'm closing this up. When I say go into the airport, I want you to understand when you go to the airport flying with a firearm, you cannot use curbside check in. So you want to leave to go to the airport early. If you're flying with a firearm, it's always a good idea to get there 45 minutes to an hour earlier than you would have got there if you were flying without a firearm. So if you're getting there two hours early, 
allow yourself another half hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Now, the next thing is you want to make absolutely positively sure that you have placed your pocket knife. Go ahead and put it in the case with your gun once you get to the airport. Because uh, they don't let you fly with your pocket knife. And if you carry a good pocket knife, you definitely don't want to lose it. Because when you get up there, um, the lady will, they'll ask you, well, can you check in? And you're going to say, I have a firearm. And she's going to ask you or, or he's going to ask you, is it, is it un- empty or is it unloaded? They may or may not have you open that case up to show them that it is indeed an empty firearm. Right. I've had them do it both ways. Then what they're going to do is they're going to give you a card. And I have uh, crossed out all the information on my card, but I'll hold it up close to the camera so you can see. And they're going to have you sign it on the back. Okay. And what this card says is that you have a firearm and that that firearm is in your luggage and that you have told them and you have declared that firearm that it it is in your luggage. Okay. So you fill this out. Let me tell you, print extremely legibly on this card. And the reason I'm going to tell you that is this. If you don't print legibly and something happens to your luggage or, or your firearm can get lost, do you want to get your gun back? You betcha. So if you've printed legibly on that, it increases your chances of getting it. Okay? Right. So um, the print legibly on it, sign it. They're then going to put that in there with your firearm. They may tape it to your case. That's what they do with, have done with mine in the past most of the time. And then they will either have you stand there while they take your luggage or they will walk with you, escorting you and your luggage to the TSA x-ray room. At that time, you're standing there with your key. You're the only person that has a key to that lock. You keep that key to that lock. That is your responsibility. Don't give it to your kids. Don't put it in their backpack. You're the one that's responsible for that key. They may call you. They may have you come over there to the x-ray room and stand there while they x-ray. They may ask you for the key, at which time if they ask you for the key, you hand them the key. They will unlock it. They will ensure the gun is empty, and then they will, you will be on your way. Now, that takes a little extra time. So you got the long line of people going through there where they got to take their shoes off and all that kind of stuff. So very simply, I have told, I've had to wait 20 minutes doing that before, and I've told them, hey, you know, I don't want to miss my flight. And they have actually taken me over to the front of the line where you got to take your shoes off because they don't want that gun getting to the other end of your journey without you there. Okay. So I've actually got to cut a pretty good line from flying with a firearm. My wife's been back in there, you know, she's been back in the other room um, waiting while I'm already through security having a coffee. So flying with a firearm can sometimes be very good. Now your magazine should not be loaded. Now, There is a weight limit that I have experienced with ammunition, and that is normally around 11 pounds. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of ammunition, but I was flying to a a pistol match for IDPA, and um, the national match sometimes takes a little bit more than than 11 11 pounds of ammo. Um, So be aware, yes, there is a limit. Check with your airline. Sometimes it's 11. I'd say 10 or 11 pounds is normally the maximum weight. When you go inside the terminal and check in and they take all this and they walk over there, you have another job. Get on the airplane and uh, they won't mark the outside of your baggage that it has a gun in it. And uh, when you get to the destination, go to the carousel. Do not stop for a drink. You can maybe have enough time to stop and go to the bathroom, but you do not have time to stop and lollygag. That's not a legal term, but you know what it is. Don't stop and lollygag. You need to be there when your your suitcase comes off the carousel. Why do I say that? Well, there are some people out there that are a little bit less than honest, and they probably saw you go up there and check your firearm that morning, and guess what? They may be on the same flight as you, and they say they're going to check you getting out with your luggage, but however, sometimes luggage goes missing, and when it goes missing, it's got a gun in it, and that means you put a gun in the hand of a bad guy. Yeah, I don't think I have ever had anybody check to make sure I was getting my own luggage. Um, you know, maybe they were looking at it and noticed, but I'm I've just I've been I'm not a frequent flyer, but every time I've been on a on a plane, I'm just like, you know what, you can grab anybody's luggage and walk out with it. If they don't catch you, nobody's going to, you know. I don't that's exactly that's exactly right. Now, the first thing I would do and the first thing that I do do when I fly with a firearm is I'm not gonna take the, the firearm out in the airport. 
But what I do when I pick that luggage up, I not pretty much know what it weighs with that big, heavy case in it. If right. it feels light, I'm immediately going to check in there and see if that's in there. And then if it isn't, I'm going to go to security immediately because somewhere between where I gave them my firearm and where I picked up my luggage, something might've gone missing. Yeah. I mean, at a minimum, you can open up your luggage and lease and just see if the box is in there. Yeah, absolutely. Then I, I do that. But, you know, I make sure that I make sure it's in there at the other end and got the padlock on it. And then I've got one of my pocket knives in there clipped to the tongue of one of my shoes that I put in there. That way I immediately have a pocket knife on me. I can wait till I get to my rent a car or whatever to get my firearm out and uh, and and uh, and be armed with a firearm. But I want my pocket knife on me as soon as I get to the carousel. Yeah. So what what about um what about with a with a long gun, John? I'm assuming it's a little bit typically it's going to be in its own case, but I, but the rest of the rules would pretty much apply, I would think. But it's maybe right. Just- if you're flying with a long gun, first thing to do is make sure it's legal where you're going. Um, for instance, if you were to fly into, into maybe Colorado, uh, you would want to make sure that your magazines were in compliance with their uh, their law. You're going to be flying with it in the case. You're also going to have to show that it's empty. You're also going to have to fill out the paperwork. Everything's the same. It's just except that you have gone to a long gun instead of a instead right. of a, instead of a. Hey, that is really very very good information. I know that um, a lot of people have that question. I've had it myself. You know, you get. When you, you can look it on the internet and look at TSA's website or whatever, but it's it's just it's always nice to talk to somebody that's actually got experience with it. So, um, and I did want to take a minute here because you know I'm a big fan of your work to show off my latest hog holsters for my latest uh, tool. I guess tool here. I got a Glock. Finally, I traded my Glock 2340 caliber and got a a, a 19. You were kind enough to see. Yep, kind enough to send me this really nice new holster with the uh, Ulticlip XL. You probably, some people saw these. We did a, a talk to Randall at uh, SHOT Show and I probably at, at um, NRA Show about, maybe an NRA Show about this. And uh, I know these are on back order right now, so you can't get one of these right now. This the clip's on back order. They'll yeah, be they, said about, they said about four weeks we should be able to have them back in stock. Yeah, but um, so they're just <laughs> really popular. They're just really good. They kind of loop around your belt. Just um, it's just again, like like you can you can look at the other video from 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 the um, Blade, I mean NRA show, but and then this is still my uh, it's my forty three that um somebody told me it was a great gun for 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 kids and ladies, but it, it's also very concealable, so I, I kind of like it anyway. But um, that's funny. Which brings me to another question, I, and I I told you I was going to ask you about this, so I'm not throwing a big surprise on you, but. I know that a lot, you know, you make, in my opinion, I don't know what it is about your holsters. I know this sounds like, a, sounds like an advertisement here, but there's nothing super fancy about them. They just stinking absolutely work and they are literally the most comfortable holster I've ever used. Um, and they just, you know, I like the UltiClip. I think that's, that's a, most, I, there are very few people I know that really put UltiClips on their holsters anyway. I think that adds a lot to it, but just the holster themselves are really, really comfortable. But I also know that I've had a few comments that from, I guess, Beretta owners that you don't make holsters for Berettas, right? So and I know there's a story behind that, a little bit of a story behind that. Can you uh, share that with us? Well, uh, yeah, I'll share it. I am a, a, a different individual. Uh, my wife said that my life expectancy in the corporate America would be shorter than a door gunner in Vietnam. Um, I'm about, a, about as politically correct as they, as they come. <laughs> right. Um, but the thing of it is, is I, when I go to work in the morning, I absolutely love making holsters. Um, and when I make a holster, I want the people to carry it. I, I want people to wear the holster. And the reason I wanted to do that is because it's about helping America wear guns. You know, HAWG holsters, helping America wear guns. And, but I'm happy. I love doing what I do. I, I, I am a custom holster maker. Every holster that I make is custom made. And um, I like it when customers call me and tell me what their desires are. Sometimes I can't feel what I cannot feel what they need. And, uh, you know, I, I can't make w- exactly what they want, but I still like talking to them, you know. And the thing of it is, is when I go to work and I make holsters in the morning, um, I, I've got a good set of earphones. Um, they have to be really loud because, you know, a lot of gunfire has made me deaf. By the way, Wear hearing protection whenever you shoot, even with a 22, 
unless you're shooting a suppressed firearm, in which case, enjoy the quietness of the suppressed firearm. Okay, back to why I don't make Beretta holsters. Okay, so when I go there, I put in something like, uh, today it was Merle Haggard and a little bit of Montgomery Gentry and uh, Johnny Cash today is what I made holsters to. And uh, if you were standing outside the little factory, you would actually hear some idiot that thinks he can sing in there singing a song. You really would. And you'd probably bang on the side, bang on the wall saying, hey, shut up in there. But hey, I'm happy. OK, for some reason, whenever I put a Beretta in my hand, I lose that happiness. And uh, I just don't want to do that. I mean, it just it, it, it reminds me of when I was in the Marine Corps and saw some things with Beretta. And no, it ain't PTSD. It's just the fact that it, it's just not my favorite thing. And, and I really do enjoy I enjoy making what I make. Um, I take pride in each and every holster. People call me up and say, I got this holster. It takes me a minute. And then I can probably tell them almost exactly what the holster looks like. There's a lot of guns that are very similarly shaped. But when I make a holster um, and I go to package it up, I don't have to look at a tag on it. I, I know what holster it is. I, you know, I remember making that holster by hand. And uh, I, I enjoy what I do. And if, if I'm not going to enjoy doing it, um, they're not going to enjoy the holster. And uh, I just, I don't, I don't enjoy, enjoy messing with Berettas. And uh, it's nothing against the company. It's nothing against the company. They're a very pro-gun company. Uh, they've, they've been making guns a long time. Um, I don't have a grudge against Beretta. It's just that it, it's, I, I guess everybody has to have something they don't do. And, and, and uh, In-N-Out Burger makes the best burgers out here in Arizona. And uh, Chick-fil-A makes the daggone best chickens in, in the United States. But you can't go to Chick-fil-A and order a burger, and you can't go to In-N-Out and order a chicken. And, uh, and, and you can't go to Hog and order a bread. And I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but that's just the truth. It, it, I'm really good at what I do. I really enjoy what I do. And I, I have made some bread holsters. And that's how I found out that they really just kind of they put a funk on me. And so uh, I just don't do it anymore. Well, that's good. You got to keep on singing, man. If you, if you don't feel like singing, it, you don't work through it. Trust me, you, know? you don't want to hear it, but I like how I sound when my headphones are really, really loud. So, uh, well, I, I knew that story, but I thought maybe um, somebody else might want to hear it. So, what well, it is getting, um, we probably ran longer than I intended for this first time, but it was really good information. And um, you had a surprise, I think, for the people that were that are willing to hang on to watch the end of this video. So, I'm going to let you um, tell them what that is right now. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. From now until the end of October, okay, from now to Halloween, um, I'm going to give a discount code to Survival on Purpose listeners, and it's going to expire October 31st at midnight, 2017, okay? And that it's going to be a 15% discount code, okay? And that, that code is going to be Survival on Purpose, all one word, lowercase, survival on purpose, flying. So survival on purpose, flying, F-L-Y-I-N-G, um, to show that you actually watched all of this video. And I can tell you about uh, discount codes. If you type it in survival, space, on, space, purpose, I can't do that. Um, I'm not very computer illiterate. I'm holster illiterate. I'm firearm illiterate. I'm flying with a firearm illiterate. I mean, litter. See, I'm even talking in litter. But the thing of it is, is I'll tell you, tell you this. If you type it in like this, S-U-R-V-I-V-A-L-O-N-P-U-R-P-O-S-E-F-L-Y-I-N-G, all together, no spaces and no dashes, you will get 15% off between now and midnight Halloween. John, I really, really appreciate you taking time. Hopefully everybody, this, this turns out really well. I would like to do this again. I've got a lot of other questions I think you could help us answer. You know, if you're watching this, if, if, if this is a good format for you like this, let us know in the, in the comments below. Um, you know, if you've got suggestions or whatever, anything, maybe you might like to ask John. Maybe we could do an Ask John feature on a regular basis. That might be a good way to just put your questions below and we'll try to put maybe pick out the best two or three questions and do a quick video about it on a periodic basis. I think that might be a pretty cool idea. So, um, John, once again, I really appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate I know, it. Uh, God bless you, Brian. Okay. So that was my friend, John Abbott from hog holsters with uh, hopefully some good information and hopefully, um, you can take advantage of that 15% discount. Again, it's good through the end of October, 2017. 
Um, you know I've said it many, many times, John makes my favorite holsters I've ever used, uh, my everyday carry holster, just a great guy, a wealth of information. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this format. We'll try to clean up the video a little bit, maybe kind of work that out. This is the first time, so there's some bugs we got to work out. But if you like this format, then we can certainly, um, you know, maybe make it a semi-regular feature on the channel just to, a good way of maybe getting a different viewpoint and some and, and some expertise that i don't have anyway as always thanks for watching survival on purpose i put out a brand new video every friday and saturday very often random videos throughout the week you can check out another one right here if you're not subscribed please click down in the corner and subscribe i'd really appreciate it once again my name is brian you're watching survival on purpose remember survival is not an accident so be prepared i'll see you next time